So good morning, everybody. Uh, I do apologize for my physical condition. Uh, my my voice is not that I know usually, but anyway, I will try my best. Uh, well, um, my presentation is based mostly on uh, what is going on on the East Med side. And okay, um, I agree with we have a couple of slides that are quite. Uh, new in terms of publication, and then uh, there is also a reference to what uh, DEPA, the, the Public Gas Corporation, is doing to support, of course, the gas market in Greece and in the area. So I have prepared <coughs> some slides for you, starting from a panoramic. This is the map <coughs> showing first why Greece is the gateway to Europe. And uh, you have uh, the panoramic view of what is actually working in the area, which is practically nothing, and what is potentially designed to be in the future. Uh, you may realize, uh, looking to the yellow big arrows, that our aim and our target is to somehow develop the gas routes vertically, that means from the Aegean to the Baltic, <coughs> as well as horizontally, from Turkey to Italy and then to the rest of Europe. Uh, most of the projects are uh, actually still PCIs or, let's say, uh, just uh, projects, just, uh, let's say, on the design step. Uh, we have, for instance, uh, TAP, which is, okay, it's a project in the sense that it is actually going on, and all the rest, that means uh, the IGB, the FSRU in Alexandropolis, then the new version, the revival of the ITGI, and the East Med, at least uh, the Greek uh, or the Poseidon, uh, let's say, route, which is from uh, the Levantine Basin to Cyprus, Crete, Peloponnese, Mela, and Mela, Mela and Greece, and then to Italy. Going forward now, what is actually done in the region with the Greek interest? Poseidon. Poseidon is a joint venture, 50-50, between DEPA and Edison. And I'm proud and honored to be the, the, the president of the board. We actually are involved in three major projects in the area, all of them uh, assigned as PCI's project of common interest for the European Union. Uh, IGB is the interconnector Greece-Bulgaria, and then through other interconnectors, a network of interconnectors, that means Bulgaria-Romania, which is practically already uh, finished, eventually uh, Bulgaria-Serbia, and so on. We aim to bring uh, gas from the south, from Aegean area to the north. Then, <coughs> with uh, the blue uh, color, you have the, the IG, IDGI or IGI Poseidon, which means uh, the pipeline which uh, onshore will connect Kipi, our board to Turkey, to uh, Igumenica area, and then the offshore uh, side uh, from uh, Igumenica to uh, Orlando, Italy. This is <coughs> a very discussed pipeline, uh, initially designed to bring uh, additional Russian gas in, to Europe. Okay, there are issues there. You know that there is uh, an MOU standing uh, among uh, Gazprom, Edison, and DEPA on this, and we're working on that. Of course, with the full respect of the uh, European Union legislation and, the, and all that say the terms. But of course, this, uh, <coughs> this pipeline could uh, eventually host also gases from other sources, like Iranian gas or Caspian gas and, and so on. And then we have uh, the, the pipeline, which is, let's say, the, the main topic of this uh, session today, which is uh, the pipeline, the East Med pipeline, which leads the Levantine Basin to Italy and the rest of Europe. So let's talk a bit about this. First of all, <coughs> a quick 
a glance on what is the actual status of the gas resources and the LNG terminals in that area, because there is a lot of speculation what is going to be discovered the next year or 10 years after. Okay, this is just speculations and considerations. So you, you can see which are the reserves. Uh, Jor is a very big reserve. Uh, you see that in Cyprus we have Aphrodite, but there are other reserves to, to come. And please take a note. Personally, I anticipate a lot of interest for Block 11 in the uh, Cyprus uh, Cypriot uh, territorial waters, which is uh, the Block 11, the Onisiphorus block, where Total is expecting to find a lot of gas, which eventually would change completely the landscape over there. Now, why <coughs> uh, there is need of additional gas input to Europe? This is linked to what uh, Mr. Veriopoulos and Mr. Thomas already explained to you in regards of the potential needs, the, the gap that there will be for sure in Europe. Uh, you can actually have a look on that. The, uh, the outcome is that is uh, that uh, green there, which is, means that by 2030, around 100 BCM of gas will be, there will be a lack, a need of additional gas. This is very important. Uh, mind you that uh, two, two or three days ago, there has been a very tough and thorough discussion for this in the Italian parliament. The Italians, they un understand, they realize that, uh, <coughs> that Algerian um, gas uh, LNG is not uh, that uh, big quantity that could uh, eventually serve the needs. And then you have uh, <coughs> Sorry, uh, <coughs> you have uh, uh, Norway, which is uh, gradually lacking of gas, and Holland also declining. So there are a lot of needs for the Italian markets and the Swiss market, and so on. There are two scenarios actually <coughs> for the Eastern Mediterranean region. Uh, the conservative scenario talking of 30 BCM per year, which will be needed on top. Now, <clears throat> this is a quite uh, accurate map of what might be the parkour, the route of this pipeline. <clears throat> Finally, we have the pre-feed studies. Now we can talk scientifically about the efficiency of this, uh, of this uh, pipeline. There has been a lot of speculation in the past years. Uh, people talking of pharaonic uh, projects. Me personally, I was a bit, you know, hesitant. Now we have the proofs, we have the studies that uh, this pipeline is technically feasible, economically viable, and commercially competitive. <coughs> and talking for technical feasibility, and this is a slide which is first time shown in, in public. Uh, you see here for the people that they have a technical background that uh, all the steps uh, are quite, uh, are, are fully feasible. There is uh, just one small piece of less than 10 kilometers just before the Crete Island where the depth is quite high is uh, 2,800 uh, 2, meters, where, okay, there is a small problem, but you know that the technology has advanced, so we can cover also this. So the whole parkour is guaranteed. <coughs> now, now we, we actually touch the geopolitics, because business is good, geopolitics is good, point is to combine both of them. There are alternative scenarios, and please just stick to this. Uh, the red is the, the scenario that we would like as DEPAS Greece to be materialized. That means uh, the pipeline leaves uh, the Levantin Basin, then Cyprus, Crete, uh, Peloponnese, and, uh, and Italy. Uh, there is also another scenario that uh, 
the pipeline is designed, the Anatolian side, let's say, to leave uh, the, the basin and then uh, be directed to Turkey, where you have, again, two options, either to continue up and join, let's say, the route from Tanap and, again, join the European territories. But trust me, this is much more expensive and technically much more difficult vis-a-vis, -vis, let's say, the scenario that we are actually promoting, or a smaller pipe just to serve the additional Turkish needs, which are growing. As you see, uh, we expect to have additional 25 BCM by 2040. And then, of course, there is a third scenario, and I have my good friend, Mr. Sakiris, who will talk later, that all this will be done and will be served through LNG stations, either FSRUs or the classical terminals. Uh, all this being combined also with uh, a certain pipeline from the Levantine Basin to Egypt. So all these scenarios are open. We have the pros and the cons for this, and we can spend another session if you like, if you don't mind. Uh, however, I think that uh, since politics have a vital role here, particularly in this area. You know that the Cypriot issue is still open, and in order to have a resolution, a reliable resolution, you have also to pass through this. So I'm not very optimistic that uh, this will end uh, soon, or there will be, let's say, a certain delay. But anyway, we're working on that. So just to wrap up a bit uh, the section regarding this med, uh, as already stated, we are aiming to have 30 BCM of additional gas in the coming years from that area, and that uh, the and that the uh, the, the particular pipeline is uh, technically <coughs> and uh, commercially competitive viable. Now let's turn a bit the page and talk about Greece and what we are, going, we are doing actually to support all this. Because you know, in order a country, which is a peripheral country like Greece, with a small market, to become, let's say, a kind of regional, a peripheral, let's say, hub or whatever, you have first to strengthen your own market, your domestic market. This in terms of business, business-wise, but also in order to apply a certain socio-centric, a kinonico-centric uh, profile in all this. So, we are talking about the openness of the market, opening the market, doing this, doing that, regulatory authorities, whatever. All these are accepted. This is the practice. But what is lacking actually in Greece is the gas culture. Okay? You have 350,000 counters of gas for the whole country. Uh, meanwhile, you have seven million, seven and a half million of counters for electricity. So, you understand that there is a lot to do in order to expand the gas, the gas culture, the gas, the users of gas in Greece. Uh, we are working hard. Trust me, on that. Uh, DEPA and the DEPA groups. That means the EPAS, the DESFA, uh, DEDA, the new <coughs> uh, company that we uh, actually commissioned two months ago. Uh, the distribution company, um, among others, to actually promote CNG, compressed liquid natural gas or liquefied natural gas, in remote areas, islands, and individual customers. And mind you that there is in place an MOU with PPC, DEI, the power company, to jointly bring gas to the island, to the islands, Crete and the other islands. Um, the peripher I mean, the, the project for the peripheries, you see the map. Uh, there are three peripheries already, uh, let's say, involved in this. Uh, that is Eastern Macedonia, Thrace, Central Macedonia, and uh, Central Greece and Abia. A lot of capital cities and smaller cities like Delphi will join this network in the coming 10 years. This will enable us to have uh, 1,200 kilometers more network, new jobs, 
and also to leave a footprint of this work in the society, facing the energy poverty and exclusion. Mind you that I have been everywhere in Greece, and I have seen hundreds of mayors and people of the periphery, uh, people burning cardboards or whatever they find in the forests, and are asking us, please bring gas as soon as possible. And there is also a competition between mayors who is going to bring earlier the gas in his own town. Uh, and also other, uh, let's say, initiatives, LNG buckering, which is coming in, in five years, and uh, the physical brand name, the natural gas for gas fueling, car fueling, and I, <coughs> I only, I challenge you and I'm calling you to use, to buy uh, dual system cars with uh, and, uh, natural gas and, uh, and uh, the classical, let's say, oil. You will save a lot of money and you will protect the environment. Now, all these are targeting to increase the local consumption, the local market, by nearly uh, let's say uh, 0 0.8 to 1 BCM per year, targeting to have a market from 4 BCM, 3 to 4 BCM today to the actual, to a projected 8 BCM in 10 years or 11 or 12 years. Then you have a word and a flag to wave and say, listen, I'm already a certain market of medium size, but I'm a still a market that I can eventually fight for more, which is the more, of course. More means to become the gateway to Europe. More means to try to have a kind of a regional hub. I think that Alexandropoli, we can explain that during the discussion, has all the characteristics to become this regional hub. You remember the maps. Everything either starts from there or across the area. Of course, a focus on the potential indigenous production of hydrocarbons. And I think that Mr. Stergulis will later speak on that and for sure further development of renewables. <coughs> an, efficient, an efficient role has to play the energy diplomacy. We have a very good piece of land. Greece is, is blessed. But you have to know how to use this very nice and very, let's say, geographically position piece of land. Uh, I have practically have finished just leaving for consideration. The time is limited. Some tips for discussion and, and consideration. I would be grateful to discuss somehow someday tools to have to, to apply to implement gas depoliticization. This is linked to the third one, excessive geopolitics versus financial viability of projects. We have to, to discuss on that. Geopolitics is not enough by their own, of course. For sure, energy market decarbonization, which is a year to date an actual ongoing project, but we have to make an evaluation and look the way forward. And finally, <coughs> a question mark that I still keep in my, in my life, being 35 years in this area, but been also in social uh, life and been a left. Massive and asymmetric monetization of energy resources is always an opportunity or a threat. Thank you very much.